Hello everybody and welcome back to another video by Blissful Techno Health. Welcome to my lesson four video in my how to use a computer with Windows 11 for beginners series. Today I'm going to be going over some personalization information and how to help manage your computer regarding the power settings. Now your power settings are very important the personalization, not as important, but it's nice to have your computer look the way you like and to be able to personalize it to you to really give you that good vibe that you're looking for. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So for personalization settings <clears throat> or for manipulating the way the computer looks uh, to more of a pleasing look for you, you want to start off by going to the settings um, program which you can get to by going to start and then up to settings or you can go to search and just type settings and that will bring that up. Once you are in settings, you'll see over here on the left pane there is a personalization button or tab or section that you can click on. Now within the personalization area there's a lot of different things really that you can do and it's very customizable. We have different themes that Windows has um, pre-built in. I can click on any of these themes to apply it and you can see the preview of it up here and also as you'll notice the background picture is changing as well. So you can see the different colors that are being applied. You can change to a theme that really changes it a lot you can see here now everything's kind of that really dark gray color on my menu. Also in the start menu, you've got kind of this pinkish salmon tone there. Um, there's some transparency. Um, you can see kind of behind that window a little bit. So there's a number of different options here that come pre-built into Windows, which is kind of nice. And some of these are honestly pretty cool. If a person doesn't want to change the entire theme, let's say you like the theme, but you just want a different background picture, you can actually come down here to background and select a different background picture. So nothing changes except for that desktop background. See that? But you don't have to use this background. You can use pretty much whatever background that you want. So like I said, you have these other pre-built in um, themes which also come with these different images that you can use. You can also choose a different picture of your own. If you have a picture that you have taken and you've uploaded onto your computer or if you have downloaded a different picture that you want to use, you can actually click on browse photos and it will take you to your pictures library under this PC and pictures, your pictures folder, and if you have a different picture that you want to use, you can select that. Now you can see it's using one that wasn't shown in the list. So there you can see it's different. So changing your background really is a personal thing. My daughter, she likes to draw pictures in Paint 3D and set her own pictures to her background even. So it is very customizable. So let's take a look here. Now this picture, I actually, this one, uh, just to verify, this one did not come with Windows. This is one I grabbed off of a website um, for sampling in this video. And the reason I grabbed that picture, and also this picture here, these are both pictures I grabbed to sample, is you don't have to have a static background picture. You can actually come over here and where it says personalize your background, where it says picture, you can do a couple of different things. I've got slideshow available. If I click on slideshow, I can choose a picture album for a slideshow. So basically you just browse to a folder and in the folder it will rotate those pictures and display them as your background it'll rotate them so over the period of like right now it's set to every 30 minutes I can set that to one minute every one minute it'll change that background picture and so on I hope that makes sense you could shuffle the picture order so it's not doing them just in, in order that they are in the folder. And that can be kind of cool. You can 
Um, down here says let slideshow run even if I'm on battery power. So that will draw a little bit more battery power to run the slideshow. Very, very, very small amount. But you can let it run even if I'm on battery. You can turn that on or off. And choose a fit for your desktop image. This is important because sometimes if you have an image that doesn't fit the screen exactly, um, you can modify it here to make it fit how you like. So you can choose an album, modify it, etc., etc. So that's for your background um, desktop image. Now let's go back to the original personalization area. And now here you can see you've also got, um, yes, you've got your background, but you can modify your own theme however you like. So let's say I like what I have right now, but I want to just change, oh, see, a minute went by and it changed that. I left on the slideshow, so now it switched to the other picture that's in that folder. Now, if I go to colors, I can actually modify the colors that I'm using with my current desktop background. So I'm basically making my own theme. Like I say, I want kind of this steel blue looking color. I can use that instead. And you can see here the menus it shows differently and you're gonna see um, reflected everywhere else. So let's go ahead and go back you can see with the themes, you can actually create your own and also download pre-made themes. You can grab themes usually from the Microsoft Store. For example, if I go to the Start menu, I go to the Store, and let's look up um, Desktop Themes. Look, I already pulled this up. You can see here, there's free different themes that you can download and use. Like let's grab this one here, Mountain, Mountain Dwellings. Oh, that's right, I have to log in. You have to have an account logged in. I don't log in on this desktop or on this laptop using an account. I just use this laptop in my shop. But you can download this. You should have your account logged in and you just apply it. So pretty awesome, you can get your own themes. Now let's go back. You can also change your lock screen. The lock screen is that first screen that when you first pull up your computer, you know, it shows you the time and it will give you your login password if you if you require a password for login. You can change your lock screen as well. So I could change it to a picture. Let's say I want this to be my lock screen picture. Then that is now my lock screen picture. That's already applied. So you can also do the same thing with your lock screen. And you can also browse photos and select a different one that you have already downloaded. So that is personalizable as well. Um, now down here you kind of get into more detailed items that are oh, for different applications like you have your touchscreen keyboard, if you have a touchscreen, um, if you have, you want to modify your start menu to show recently added apps, you can turn that off. Show most used apps on. I actually like to have that on. Show recently opened items and start. So, I mean, you can modify your start menu here just by looking through there. We won't go into great detail on the rest of it. The biggest thing I wanted to cover was the fact that you can change your colors, you can change your background image, you can create slideshows, you can grab different themes and backgrounds, and etc. Now we're gonna go into the screen saver. Okay, screen saver, I don't know if you're familiar with the screen saver or not, but a screen saver is something that, well, let's just show you. Now, one thing that's important to understand is screen saver is actually not in settings. I have to do a search, and if I click on change screen saver, as you can see there, it brings up a different menu that's not a part of the settings. <clears throat> the screen saver is usually off by default, and the reason why is because screensavers were important back in the day when we had those big CRT monitors, those box monitors before we had these flat screens, the LCDs. Those CRT monitors actually, if you had an image just stagnant on the computer for a long period of time, would actually burn the image into the screen. We don't have that problem anymore, so screensavers are, screen are no longer uh, necessary, but they can be kind of fun. If you want a screensaver, you can actually modify it and change it to however you want. For example, they have you—they give you a few built into windows, not a lot, 
But I can do, let's say I do bubbles. And then you can see in this little preview here, and I can preview it full preview. You can see the bubbles bounce it across the screen. Then what happens is that screensaver will turn on and activate over a certain amount of time, however you designate it. I have mine set to one minute, um, looks like by default or whatever. But you can change that to however long, and you can change which one you're using. Photos would be like that slideshow. Um, so if I click photos, I can go to settings. Um, I can browse which folder is being used. It defaults to the pictures directory, the slideshow speed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera there. So this is the screensaver area. Now, like I said, a screensaver is not necessary. It's totally up to you if it's something you want to have just kind of for fun since they're no longer needed. Thankfully, with better technology, things tend to last longer and we don't need to manage them as much. But speaking of manage, let's look at power management. Okay, now that I'm in screensaver, I see there's a change power settings. I'm not gonna go here yet. I'm gonna close this down and I'm gonna come over to system on the left. And once I have system pulled up, you're gonna see an area here for power and battery. Now I'm on a laptop. A desktop is not gonna have any battery functions. If you have a laptop, just understand that Windows really has been optimized to try to help you with your battery life. Whereas a desktop, it just, it doesn't matter but you're still going to want to manage your power settings with the desktop so your computer's just not running all the time. And there's a lot of different things you can do. So let's look here on the power and battery section. Right now you can see it says that my screen is using more battery than usual because brightness is set to high. I could lower the brightness, but I like my brightness high, so I keep it cranked up. Now, I hardly ever use this laptop on battery. It's almost always plugged in. But if I wanted to help conserve battery life, I could lower the brightness. I also have mine set to never sleep. I only turn this laptop on when I'm using it. When it's I'm not using it, I just turn it right back off. It's a shop laptop. I use it to print pictures on my uh, shirt printers, so I don't need it on hardly ever. Just when I work for a few hours a day, printing shirts. But you typically are gonna to wanna to have your device be able to sleep. Sleep mode is actually really important because if you don't have sleep mode, your hard drive and everything is just gonna be running all the time and it's gonna be hot all the time. Now here you can see power uh, under power, we have screen and sleep. Okay, I can click this and it's gonna bring down a menu if it's not already open for you, which gives you different options. And these options you've got on battery power, turn off my screen save or turn off my screen after x amount of time. Now turning off the screen literally just turns off the screen. That's all it does. The computer will still be running. When plugged in, turn off my screen after x amount of time. On battery power, put my device to sleep after x amount of time. When plugged in, put my device to sleep after x amount of time. Now mine, I'm going to turn off my sleep I don't want mine to ever go to sleep. And I'm gonna turn this to never. I don't want mine to go to sleep. I will turn it off when I'm done with it. Now this is very up, this is very much up to you. So you can see here you've got some settings that you can play with. Now, down here you've got uh, a battery saver mode. It turns on when it's at 20% battery, gives you some battery usage um, statistics here. Okay, but there are more power settings to look at besides just what they give you here in the settings area. If I come down to search, you're gonna to wanna to type control panel. You'll see that it will show you an app for control panel. Open that up. Okay, follow along. So open up your control panel. And now we're gonna to go to system and security. Under system and security, you can see there's a power options menu. Go ahead and click on the power options menu. In here, you can also play with your power settings. There's a couple of big things here I find um, can be very important depending on what you're doing. For example, over here you can choose what the power buttons do on the computer. 
If I push the power button, what's it gonna do? Is it gonna shut the computer down? Is it gonna do nothing? Is it gonna put it to sleep or hibernate? Just turn off the display? So you can really modify that here. Now, some laptops will have a sleep button. So obviously you can tell it to go to sleep if you hit the sleep button. Here's what I find very important. When I close the lid to the laptop, what do you do? Should I have it shut down or sleep or do nothing? I have mindset to do nothing because I will actually plug this specific laptop into my TV and we'll watch movies from the laptop on the TV. We'll plug it in HDMI. So, but we don't want the screen open while we're watching the movie. We want it to be closed so we only have the light from the TV in the room. We don't want the light from the laptop. So we have it set to do nothing. So when we can close the lid, but still it'll play the movie. I hope that makes sense. So let's go ahead and go click the back button, go back to power options. You can change what the power buttons do, uh, choose what closing the lid does, so just another option there. But let's take a look at our selected plan, balanced, recommended. We're gonna click on change plan settings. This gives us a few more options, just like where it gave us options in the um, other settings menu. So, you know, turn off the display after so much time when it's on battery or plugged in, put it to sleep, you know, same thing. Just a different menu for the same stuff. But there is something that you need to know about if you do not want your computer to ever go to sleep. If I click on change advanced power settings, you can see there's a hard disk section here. This says turn off hard disk after X amount of time. Okay, I don't want mine ever to turn the hard disk off. And I don't want it to do it when it's on battery or plugged in. If the hard disk turns off, it's basically going into sleep or hibernation. If you don't check this off here, it can conflict with the other areas and still turn off even if you have it set to not go to sleep. I have run into that problem myself. So if you don't want your computer to ever go asleep, just be sure to come to this spot and shut that off. Or you know, tilt it to be never and zero. So let's go ahead and cancel that. And that covers the power settings. So I hope the power settings make sense. I hope we went over that well enough. Just remember that you have options under the control panel and system security, power options, as well as you have options in the settings under power and battery. That wraps up today's video on personalization and, and how to manage your computer's screensaver and power settings. I hope this video has been helpful and informational for you. Like always, if you have a comment or a question, please shoot it down below. Please give the video a thumbs up to move it up in the algorithm. Click the bell so you don't miss out on future uploads, but you gotta be subscribed as well to get those notifications. So be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time. Have a great day.